Well, hello there. It is time for a new studio tour and we'll just start by going to the actual studio. We are entering the room. As you can see, it's not a huge room. There's a bunch of stuff. And <laughs> we'll start right here. Uh, I actually had to rewatch the video I made a year ago. I don't know why I put the studio in the quotation marks, but a lot has changed since shooting that video. Uh, but not all the things. I'm still using my MacBook Pro 15 inch, the 2016 model. The one that introduced all the dongles and I have to say after using this for over a year <laughs> my only question is Apple what are you doing nobody is using the USB-C or if you want to get anything with USB-C it's much more expensive than USB or Thunderbolt or anything like that it's just stupid I have many many dongles I need adapters for any everything and uh, it's stupid and the other thing I've noticed after doing a bunch of video editing is that this computer doesn't handle 4K video at all. It just goes completely crazy. Anytime I have 4K footage in the project and it's just the fans start screaming like crazy and all that kind of stuff. It's just... It becomes a jet plane way, especially when I'm rendering something with 4K things. And uh, it's really frustrating, but it's a super expensive computer and I'll probably have to stick with it for a few more years. Uh, it is nice to be able to move your kind of whole studio because the audio interface I'm still using is the Universal Audio Apollo Twin. Uh, this is the, I think it's the Mark... Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 1, I think the Mark 2 ones are the grey ones. Uh, this thing has been awesome, I love it. I love how you can expand it with the is it the optical audio in thing. I did a studio session last summer where I just grabbed my laptop, this one, and then with the optical audio cable I was able to make this a 10 channel interface and run all the UAD, pl UAD plugins when we recorded drums and boy it's a nice interface it's really expensive but it's just great uh, what else my focal studio monitors sorry I'm getting some sunlight uh, focal CMS 50s and they are on the ISO acoustic, I think they are called ISO pods. Basically, they lift the monitors from the table so it doesn't re resonate there. And they also point the monitors uh, to my face <laughs> where my ears are also located. So it all makes sense. Um, and the desk itself is an IKEA desk which you can raise or lower. I actually work without a chair nowadays just because it's better for my health. And uh, for the videos, I can lower this down so I don't get that win window in my screens when I'm not in my screens, but you know. So this window doesn't appear in the video. I'll, I'll just lower the desk and sit down over here. Uh, a backup hard drive and this is the newest member of the family the victory sheriff 22 there's already a demo available that i made with it and i'm also using the torpedo live nowadays the two notes product it's a digital load box basically you plug in from the amp to this and it has the cap simulation stuff going on and then from there just take the line out to the UAD device and it's so simple it sounds awesome I love it more of my amps the Joyo Meteor I got from the Gitcon 2017 thank you Joyo made a demo and bunch of other videos with this as well my Uraltone Junior, the clean amp I use for pedal demos and um, yeah it's an amp built from a kit 
it's super fun the same company just released the princeton reverb kit which i might get building this was really fun i made the matching cap as well it's a 112 semi open back and it has a single selection vintage 30 in it thoman metronome and that's a couch still the same couch you can sit on it you can turn it into a bed that's winter time in Finland even though it's late March it still looks like this uh, my super pathetic pedal board consists only of two pedals right now the Boss Tuner and the Caroline Pure Sky Overdrive uh, I ended up selling most of my pedals just because I wanted to get the share if my friend was selling it and I'm more an amp gain guy than a pedal gain guy so it just made sense. As you can see I'm hiding a bunch of my cables <laughs> underneath the couch, never mind that. Uh, we continue over this corner where my stands live. There's the guitar stands, microphone stands, and so on. And this thing is one of the two kind of sound absorption panels I have in my room. Uh, basically, it's an old picture frame. Uh, it's <laughs> inside here, it's just old towels. And then I got this nice cloth and this one as well and covered those so it's kind of art slash convenient thing going on with these the rug on the floor and these drapes here uh, the room is unresonant enough i don't know what's the word basically it doesn't pick up that much reflection and you can actually record acoustic guitar vocals here and that kind of stuff and it's really awesome uh, my business cards Basically, it's the same business card with two different sides. This is the YouTube stuff. This is my graphic design stuff. And yeah, these are nice, which sounds really egoistic because I was the one who designed them, but ah, whatever. Um, my main camera nowadays is the Nikon D5300. I don't know how to show it to you. Uh, I got it with a nice kit lens which is from 18205 millimeters and it's been surprisingly good for video except the autofocus such such not such sucks and it sucks so much it's just it's completely unusable uh, I only can use the manual focus and yeah so I cannot really use it for vlogging because I would have to kind of be focusing all the time and the focusing on this thing isn't silent. So that's for example why I'm shooting this studio tour with my iPhone instead. So yeah. But overall it makes it makes takes it takes great video uh it also takes really good photos which is a good thing for a freelancer like me who also does photography stuff and yeah it's a good camera might get a second camera at some point but for now using this and the iphone as the second camera it's pretty good um then i have a spare battery a card reader cables battery for the camera hard drive and I don't know what's this called basically you put this into your acoustic guitars kind of sound hole and it makes it less loud and prevents feedback this is my rack delay from Soviet Union unfortunately this hold button is broken right now and when you turn this on it just makes a bunch of crazy sounds I'll get it fixed at some point in the near future, I hope, and I will definitely make a demo out of it once it's working. Uh, my microphones still have the Shure SM58, 
still have the Shure SM7, which I used for my kind of speech or voiceover, whatever that's called, for a long time. The only issue is that it doesn't pick up voice really well if I'm speaking from like a meter apart from the actual microphone, or I would get a lot of room reflection. And I also like to turn my head around all the time. So, so uh, while this microphone is really directional, so it creates issues. So I ended up getting a Rode NTG2, which fixes all of those issues. It's also pretty good with acoustic guitar and stuff like that. I've been really happy with the setup and I can record pretty much everything I need with this besides drums, obviously, but I'm not recording drums here anyway, so it's not an issue. Uh, capo, uh, the Taylor Guitars magazine, they send me because I own a Taylor acoustic guitar. Uh, wide angle lens for the iPhone. I tried this on before shooting the video, but the video looked kind of stupid with it, so I ended up not doing it. Picks, strings, cable and over here I have one of my two lights I used to shoot the videos uh, it's a set called Falcon Eyes something something a fairly cheap Chinese light kit with two lights like these uh, they are actually pretty good except this part which connects the actual light to the stand, this will probably break at some point and I'll have to get something else then, but otherwise they're pretty good. The light or the kind of the color temperature of the light is pretty natural and um, yeah, I've been getting pretty good results with both videos in this room, but also taking photos like profile pictures of people and such uh, using these to it's been a pretty good investment overall. Uh, this is my M Audio Code 49. I mainly use it to program drums and record all kinds of keyboard backgrounds. I do. Uh, it's a fine <laughs> keyboard, uh, except uh, some for some reason I'm not getting like any nice bright lights on the pads anymore. I don't know what I did, but it's not working. Uh, this keyboard tends to forget all the kind of settings and stuff you program into it. And then every time you plug it into the computer, it kind of restarts and starts all over again. And I'm getting tired to press like five keys to change the MIDI mode or something like that. So whatever. I'm just going to give you a super quick sneak peek to the closet. Ah! Because that place is a mess. For a long time, I planned to make this closet my kind of vocal booth. And actually, when I started doing videos, I would put a guitar amp in there and play it loud and mic it with the SM7B and SM58. But nowadays, because I have the torpedo live, I don't have to do that anymore. I'm happy because I don't have to do that. I get a more consistent sound. I don't have to annoy myself, the cats, my wife, or the neighbors, or anyone else. It's just a perfect setup for home studio use. My guitars, there's the Epiphone ukulele. Let's see if I can get it from here. Yay, it looks like a Les Paul. And in the last video, I said that I might do something with it at some point. And I did, and you can find the cover of Velvet Revolver's Slither on my channel. I'll put a link in the description. I use this ukulele through this amp. I had Awesome Aero from Nitro Force 9 as the guest vocalist. I don't know what's happening, but I just heard some weird sound somewhere. Let's ignore that. <laughs> Moving on, this is uh, my wife's actually acoust nylon acoustic string. Um, I finally restrung it, actually played it on a song that 
didn't become a YouTube video. It was a for different project. Uh, this is my Taylor 110E. Still have the same acoustic. My Squire, I think it's the vintage modified 70s series. Actually played this live yesterday for the second or third time. <coughs> Excuse me, it was fun. Uh, and then my two electrics, the VHC Custom and my Tele. There's demos of those two available on my channel as well. And I think that might be it. If you're interested on the software side, I'm using a Logic Pro X. Ooh, you can see my reflection from the screen. Lovely. Uh, I'm not using the Logic Pro X for the drums. I'm using the Easy Drummer. Two. Boom. Like that. And for video editing, I'm using Adobe Premiere, which I'm growing to hate a little bit because of a few stupid things, but I don't want to go into details any more than that. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this home studio tour. Uh, it's amazing how much you can do with a really simple setup and a few clever tricks like the kind of sound absorption panels and stuff like that. A few microphones, two cheap lights, a MIDI keyboard, few guitars, interface and so on. The only thing I really can do here is just record drums basically but I'm happy to record vocals and guitar and all of that kind of stuff here it's not perfect but it's good enough for most of the projects and I'm fortunate enough to have access to a proper studio space when I need to so that's cool as well all right thanks for watching this video if you haven't already please hit that subscribe button Hit the notification bell as well to be notified of my new videos. Check out some other stuff I've done. And yeah, thank you for watching and I shall see you next time. Woo.